Let us consider data points representing t-shirts. So one data point is a particular t-shirt. And we represent the data point, in this case a t-shirt, using features. So the features here could be the size, which could be large or extra large or extra extra large. It could be the composition, like percentage of cotton used for this t-shirt and also the country of production, so made in, for example, made in Finland. So these are all features that characterize the data point. And let's assume we are interested in a particular quantity of interest, which is the label, and the label is the amount of water used for the production of the t-shirt. And for simplicity we assume that we combine the features, so the size, the uh, amount of cotton and the country of production into a single numeric feature X, so a single number X, which somehow reflects the size and the composition and the country of production for this t-shirt. And the label is also a number and this is the amount of water used for the production of the t-shirt. And in machine learning we are interested in learning a predictor or hypothesis map that reads in the feature and delivers as output uh, a, predict a prediction of the label or a predicted label, which hopefully is as close as possible to the true label. And to measure this approximation quality we need some quantitative measure, and we call this quantitative measure a loss function. A loss function is a measure that provides a quantity or a number, a number representing the loss, when predicting the label of a data point with feature x as y hat, when the true label was y. So formally the loss function maps a data point, a labeled data point with feature x and label y and a prediction or more generally a predictor, so it also depends on the can also depend on the whole predictor function to a number which we call the loss. While this might look very abstract, in the end we have we use very a very small set of loss functions in machine learning applications. Maybe the most popular loss function for numeric labels, so when this uh, quantity of interest is a number, like in our case, it represents the amount of water used for the production of the t-shirt we could use the squared error loss, which is simply the square of the prediction error. So we take the square of the prediction error. This is the prediction error. What is important here is, in order to evaluate the loss function, we need to know the true label. If we don't know the true label of the data point, or in this case, if we don't know the true or the correct amount of water used for the production of this particular t-shirt, we cannot evaluate the loss function. So in order to evaluate or compute the loss function, we need to know the label of the data point. And that's why we need labeled data. And often in machine learning problems, the most difficult part is to get labeled data, so to get 
to get data points or to obtain data points for which we know the feature and the label. Remember, knowing the feature is easy because by definition features are properties or characteristics of data points which can be measured easily, while the label is the quantity of interest that we would like to predict. So for, many, for most data points we don't know what the label is, we only know what the feature is. However, we need to feed the machine learning method with a few data points, with a few examples of t-shirts for which we know the true label. Let's assume I have somehow obtained a set or a list of labeled data points, where each data point represents a t-shirt with a value of feature, some feature. The feature encodes or summarizes as a numeric quantity properties of the t-shirt, like how much cotton it contains, its size, and the country of production. But for this list of data points we also know the value of the label. So we know for each of the t-shirts in this list the amount of water that has been used to produce the t-shirt. So we denote this label data points by mm. x1 and y1 for the first data point up to xm and ym for the mth data point. So each data point in this list of labeled data points is characterized by a feature x and the label y. <clears throat> and it's often convenient to represent such labeled data points uh, as a scatter plot where we use the x-axis to represent the values of the feature and the y-axis to represent the values of the label. So we can then depict the label data points for example as dots. So this is the first data point where the feature is 10 and the label is 200. Then we have a second data point for the feature 20 and the label 250 so this would be here and we have the mth data point with feature value 50 and label let's say 300 this would be here and using these labeled data points we can evaluate the quality of a predictor or a hypothesis map. So uh, machine learning is about finding or learning a good predictor map which reads in the feature and outputs a guess or an estimate or a prediction for the label Y. So this prediction we denote Y hat and in general this is different from the true label but we hope that it's a good approximation of the true label in general. So, and if we have this set of labeled data points for which we know what the true label is, we can compare the predictor function or the graph of the predictor function. So each point on this curve here has y coordinate y hat, which is given by applying the predictor map to the feature value x. So for the predictor map, the predictor map can be evaluated for any feature value x. Once we know the function h, and this function could be represented, for example, by a decision tree, or by an artificial neural network, or it could be a linear function, which takes the feature and multiplies it with some weight x. So whatever we choose as a hypothesis space, as the set of possible predictor functions, determines how this predictor functions can look like. So here I've chosen a nonlinear predictor function. And we can compare the particular points of these predictor functions for the feature values of the known of the labeled data points with the predictions. So for this here we know that the true label is so this was the second data point. So this is y2. We know that 
this data point has label value 250. However, the prediction was different for this data point. So it was y hat 2 was the result of applying the predictor to the feature value of the second data point, which is 20. And similar for the nth data point, we know that the true label is 300, but the predicted label for the mth data point, which we denote by y hat m, superscript m, is the predictor function applied to the feature value of the mth data point, which is 50 in this example. So we get h of 50. And the result is different from the true label y for the mth data point. So in general, we have a non-zero prediction error for the for the ith data point. So let's say i is the index of the label data point. So we start with y equal to 1 up to i equal to m. And in general, for the ith data point, we have as prediction error y hat i minus the true label for the ith data point. And this prediction error can be used to measure the quality of a particular uh, prediction map or hypothesis map. We want to make this prediction error as small as possible, but to make this uh, a rigorous approach or a quantitative approach, we need to measure somehow the size of the error. And for this, we use a loss function. So, for example, the squared error loss is a popular choice for a loss function. There are different choices, and it turns out you can actually freely choose the loss function. So you can define what you want to use as loss function, how you want to measure the size of a prediction error. But it turns out for many applications, the squared error loss is a, a reasonable choice. So for the squared error loss, we measure the size of the prediction error by taking the square of the prediction error. So we take the prediction error for the ith data point, and take the square. And it turns out to be a good approach to average these losses obtained for all labeled data points. So we average this loss for all the m labeled data points. So we get some average quantity or average measure of quality for the predictor or hypothesis map h of x. Remember, this loss depends implicitly on the predictor function or predictor map since these predicted labels are given by as function evaluations or as the evaluations of the predictor map for the feature value of the ith data point. So let's write this out more explicitly. The average loss over all labeled data points for the squared error loss is given by summing the squares of the prediction errors for each data point. And many machine learning methods are based on this optim on, on a resulting optimization problem, which is choose the predictor map such that this average loss, this quantity here, average loss or training error, this is also called training error, is minimum. Is minimized. Many machine learning methods are based on the simple principle of choosing the predictor out of the hypothesis space. Remember, we typically have to restrict the set of predictor maps. We cannot allow an arbitrary predictor map because the set of arbitrary predictor maps is simply too large. So we restrict ourselves to a smaller subset. 
of predictor functions, for example, given by a decision tree or given by an artificial neural network. And out of this smaller hypothesis space, we want to choose or use that predictor function, which results in the smallest training error. So we want to find the predictor function or predictor map H, which minimizes this quantity here, this average loss over all labeled data points.